Hello everyone, Elite Cameraman here. We really just witnessed the craziest and the saddest Skibidi toilet episode ever. I literally was in shock for 15 minutes after watching two of many people's favorite characters die, and with that, the whole Bunker Squad has been killed other than Lucky Cameraman who snuck in, and we'll have to talk about him later in the video. But with how much that was revealed in today's episode and how much stuff that's been teased, I don't even know where to start. The fact that the duo we all loved and adored died is crazy. But hopefully they'll at least become legends in the Alliance and many new heroes will be. Also, let's not forget that Dafuk mentioned that episodes after 70 will be coming out much faster in an announcement about a month ago, which means we'll probably start seeing more episodes unlike the last few months. Waiting one or two weeks for each episode, still waiting for this episode, was 100% worth it because it was a whole six minutes of pure craziness. This episode probably will stay as the longest episode of Skibidi Toilet for a long while if Boom wants to make episodes faster. Before we get into the analysis itself, make sure to like this video and subscribe to pay your respects to our two heroes, Dark Speaker Man and our beloved Plunger Cameraman. Anyways, here we go. This episode starts with the ending of Episode 70 Part 2, and there is actually a very small change compared to the ending of Episode 70 Part 2, which is actually a new Easter egg that Boom put in, and it's literally an egg. For some context, there is a YouTuber called Steak, and a week ago I made a video about one of the troll leaks, and here is what I said. He actually had his fair share of encounters with Dafuk Boom also, but the last one really did not end up well for him because he made a live streamed titled Shaving My Eyebrows If Dafuk Boom Joins. And yeah, you can see how that ended up. Before this, he also shaved his head in one of the live streams and people started calling him Egg instead of Steak, which made Dafuk Boom making the Egg Toilet canon. Even though this leak is most likely a troll leak, you never know because if you look at the background, it's actually the same background as the leak on the merch store which might actually mean that the egg toilet is in episode 70, part 2. After all this, as you guys saw, Boom made a troll leak about his bald head and face making an egg toilet meme. But something happened two days ago, and on Creekcraft's stream, he said that he'd let Steak stream on his channel once if episode 70, part 3 had the egg toilet in it, and to our surprise, Boom actually put the egg toilet right at the start of the episode on the right side, making it canon in the Skibidi universe. I mean, that egg toilet might solo the whole Skibidi verse one day, but anyways, after this we see the bunker duo fly towards the end of the hallway, and suddenly the door starts opening, but right at the same time, the plunger cameraman's camera starts glitching out once again, just like when it happened in episode 68 part 2, when he was looking at the factory. I think we can safely say that the transmission error and the recording error shows up every time the secret agent is present so that his presence doesn't get recorded. This also might mean that all the times any cameraman looked at the secret agent before episode 68 part 2 also should have had the same message but we just didn't see it since Boom didn't put it while editing back then. Also this time it was a lot different since Plunger Cameraman actually heard the secret agent talking. First while the door was opening and the big laser toilet is coming out. We hear him say, it's fine, get out. But that's not all since. Plunger Cameraman actually becomes invisible while this is happening, which is crazy, because this was actually one of Secret Agent's abilities. And this means that he can use this ability on others as well. But that's still not all, since when Plunger Cameraman realizes he is invisible, he looks behind to see the Dark Speaker Man being invisible as well. But once again, that's not all. We suddenly see a cameraman hiding behind the wall with a green flashlight just like the green of the secret agent and he suddenly becomes invisible right in front of us. And he probably was the one that made us invisible. This goes deeper because, do you guys remember the ghost cameraman we saw at the end of episode 70 part 1? I guess the two ghost cameramen we saw were the secret agent's special cameramen. I don't know if they are a special breed of cameraman or if he has agents in other races as well. But this was a crazy reveal. While this is going on, we actually hear a couple more lines from the secret agent while the bunker duo is walking inside the scientist toilet's room and plunger cameraman actually sees the secret agent talking to the scientist toilet at the last second, which will be important for us later in the analysis, so don't forget about it. Now let's talk about what the secret agent said to the scientist toilet. His first line was, It is fine. Get out. And after a couple seconds he says, You are not needed to the scientist toilet. And right after Scientist Toilet yaps and Secret Agent tells him, 
You want to escape? My little pawn will kill you. And after this, he also says, Guess I can't be trusted, goodbye, to Scientist Toilet, and he leaves the FaceTime with Scientist Toilet just like how I leave my FaceTime with TV Woman, looking all rizzy. Anyways, here you go. Listen to all he said carefully. In these voice lines, when Secret Agent says, you want to escape, my little pawn will kill you, most likely refers to the fact that Scientist Toilet had an escape plan, and we saw him try and escape later in the episode, and in this example, his little pawn is most likely Plunger Cameraman, since he literally has been using him as a pawn with some outside influence, leading him all the way here. Only thing I don't understand is the I can't be trusted line, because why would the secret agent say that to the scientist's toilet? I have no idea. Also, we have the problem of the secret agent working with the toilets, but until now, we all thought he was working with the cameraman because of the way he gave Lucky Cameraman information, but it turns out that Lucky Cameraman actually was an insider, and he was on secret agent's side. Maybe after episode 65, he was hired or captured by the secret agent to change sides, because it sounds like the secret agent isn't necessarily helping one side, but instead he is his own side in this war. We'll talk more about this later in the video when the part when I'm talking about the part where he is talking to Plunger Cameraman, so make sure to watch the video until the end so that you don't miss any of it. After all this, we see that the error messages are gone, and Scientist Toilet turns to us, and since the bunker duo is now visible again, the laser toilet that just went by them starts coming back instantly, but Plunger Cameraman closes the door right at the last second before he gets shot by the lasers and dodges it instantly. This leads to Scientist doing the rock vine boom, emote being shocked that Plunger Cameraman has a remote that can close and open doors, but he just goes back to normal and clicks some buttons to enable the laser guns inside his room to kill off the bunker duo. Plunger Cameraman is fast enough to hack the first one in time, but he doesn't see the second one until he gets shot by the laser. He instantly hacks that one too after getting shot. And Plunger Cameraman also sees the scientist toilet trying to leave the room from the back door, but he also hacks that and closes the door. Seeing this scientist toilet is a little shaken and tries to use his teleport powers while saluting Plunger Cameraman, but Plunger Cameraman hacks that as well, and Imma be honest, at this point they are already violating the Baldi, giving him no respect. This makes him actually go mad and pull out his own laser gun, but Plunger Cameraman dodges it. And while he is distracted with Plunger Cameraman, Dark Speaker Man suddenly throws his spear on Scientist Toilet's head and jumps on him, but I guess this old fella's reflexes are better than Joe Biden because he blocks Dark Speaker Man, and just like that wasn't enough. Blood turned to Plunger Cameraman, who was about to attack him in light speed to knock him back, and literally split Dark Speaker Man in half in front of Plunger Cameraman, this was the moment I realized this episode wasn't going to end well. After Scientist throws Dark Speakerman's broken body, Plunger Cameraman jumps on him one more time, but Scientist Toilet stops him once again. Thankfully for the bunker duo, Dark Speakerman unexpectedly strikes again with his jetpacks, even though half his body is gone, showing how durable he is. He literally breaks Scientist Toilet's glasses, and this leads to Plunger Cameraman stabbing Scientist Toilet in the eye with his spiky plunger. This makes him even more mad and blood shoots Plunger Cameraman with his laser while he is right next to him. Plunger Cameraman blocks the attack last second with his gun to take less damage. This knocks off Plunger Cameraman and we witness one of the saddest moments of the series seconds later because the scientist toilet grins for a second right before shooting his laser onto the defenseless dark speaker man who was flipping him off in his last moments. It also looks like Scientist Toilet stole the remote control from Plunger Cameraman because we see the remote in his hands and he unhacks himself with an evil smile on his face and tries to teleport again. But this doesn't end well for him. For the first time ever, we see Large TV Man's second ability where he uses the black TV beam and actually vacuums the teleport ability out of Scientist Toilet, which is crazy. That's not all because we can see that his four arms have been changed from TV monitors to speakers, which probably adds on to his powers, making him like a mini version of Cinema Man. 
Here we can also hear him say something in reverse and he says, my technology. Here you go, listen to it yourself. After scientist teleportation is interrupted, he decides to use the laser on large TV man, but he is not really affected and actually uses his bright white TV beam to knock back scientist toilet and not gonna lie, I was surprised by this beam's powers. Large TV man is crazy powerful when you think about it. After the scientist is pushed back, they try to use the stun guns on him, but they don't seem to work. And scientist toilet presses some buttons to open the hatch under him and jump down instantly. This leads the squad on the left to go back while large TV man says, fall back now in reverse. Here you go. Listen to it yourself. And I'm glad they backed up because blood came out with an upgraded G-Man toilet base from the hatch with crazy powerful lasers and shot the freaking door even though it was closed. I think this was where he really went cuckoo and started acting actually crazy. And oh my god, literally a second later our saviors, our beautiful beloved heroes, show up from the back door. The female trio arrives with their new upgrades and jump on the back of the scientist toilet, and the large cameraman starts distracting the scientist toilet. While they are spinning, we can actually see the female trio cutting a hole behind the scientist toilet's mechanic body to reach the main body. Since now they know it was a fake body, scientist manages to kill the large cameraman and stops to laugh for a second. But before I continue, we need to talk about scientist toilet's eyes here, because we can see that his glasses were broken, and his eyes are clearly red here. Does this mean that the bodies that have red eyes are actually mechanical bodies? This seems very possible, but at the same time, not because we know that the scientist toilet didn't have a red eye on his old mechanical body at first, but he got it afterwards, which is weird, so if you guys have any theories about it, let me know. After he stops for a second, we can literally see his reaction, and if I'm honest, his reaction looked like someone put something up his butt, Suddenly he starts screaming and crashing everywhere before his main body gets out of the back with my beloved TV woman using her beam, speaker woman butchering his head with her katanas, and camera woman shooting him non-stop. This leads to him throwing each female agent off to the ground, but how dare he touch my TV woman before I could touch her? This is unacceptable. And a few moments after he gets what he deserves, after throwing everyone off to the ground, while he is literally shaking. Plunger cameraman turns to his left for a second, and we actually see the faces of the female trio from the leaks we got two days ago. We can clearly say that all three of them are worried, but scientist toilet presses some more buttons to open the hatch up top to try and escape. But the violation on the baldy doesn't stop here because the second the hatch opens up, we see the three titans that have been waiting for this moment for so long, and they literally pass on the scientist toilet as if he is a toy. First Titan cameraman uses his core flames to burns him to a crisp, making him a chicken nugget. After this, he gives it to Titan TV man who crushes the burning nugget head with the Roblox man face on, and he also tosses the scientist to Titan speaker man. And this was the moment we all been waiting for because Titan speaker man first waits until scientist toilet stops scream and uses his speakers right next to his face, but that's not all. I don't know what got inside him, but blood turned into a demon for a second and he started smashing scientist toilet for 10 seconds straight, getting faster each smash, and the other Titans just watched with awe. But before we continue, did you guys notice that upgraded Titan TV man's left shoulder monitor has been broken? We didn't see when or why this happened, but they clearly had some fights before arriving at the top of the bunker and we'll probably never know what happened. After this, they throw the scientist's body onto the ground and there is literally nothing left of his face, but sadly for us, even though we won the battle, it really wasn't a good ending. We see the large TV man teleport in front of us, but weirdly, he is also damaged a lot. And it looks like his crew, who was on the left side, has been completely wiped up other than him and two cameramen on his shoulders. But what happened? He is missing two speakers and one of them is burning alongside the damages on his body and his actual monitor being broken with something sticking out of it. And he says, just a scratch in reverse to plunger cameraman. Here you go, listen to it yourself before we move on to the saddest scene in the series.
after this plunger cameraman crawls next to Dark Speaker Man who is having his last seconds, and he dabs him for one last time before his body completely shut downs, giving us the saddest moments in the entire history of Skibidi Toilet. He really was a good fellow and only tried to look out for his best friend, but they weren't really in the best terms the last couple hours of their friendship. Make sure to like and subscribe to pay your respects to our hero. We can even see my beloved TV woman doing a cry emoji while looking at Dark Speaker Man. Don't worry, TV woman, I'll comfort you anytime you want. Literally seconds later, the sadness of the episode disappears because of a sudden glitch in Plunger Cameraman's camera, and he starts seeing the lucky cameraman who we thought died last episode far back. He zooms in to see if it's actually him, and it looks like the lucky cameraman is actually sad about what's happening, and he decides to walk away. He most likely knows what's going to happen next, and I don't think he wants to see it. Even though he is no on the side of the secret agent, I think we can safely assume that he cared about all of these agents and can't bear to watch it. The next seconds confirm the ghost cameramans once again because two random ghost cameramen appear out of thin air and they shake hands weirdly, as if it's their first time meeting. Maybe Secret Agent doesn't let any of his cameraman meet each other, then special circumstances, it also looks like they have green suits under their coats, which makes sense with the same pattern on their ties. But it doesn't end here because their flashes suddenly start becoming bright green and we witness the craziest moment in Skibidi toilet lore after Plunger Cameraman gets flashbanged. Suddenly we find ourselves in a room with the secret agent and there is a lot to talk about before we move on to what he said which was crazy important for the series' future. If you look carefully we can actually see three things on the right side and it's the heads of three agents, one cameraman, one speaker man and one TV man. I don't know if he has these as souvenirs or something else, but it's awfully weird that he has these. Maybe he has been collecting parts after battles happen, but I don't even know after this episode. Also, it looks like his folder is colored green, just like everything else he has. But the real question here that people have been asking is the computer on the left. Many people are speculating that since there are three of the races heads on the right, there is a possibility that a computer race will be added on later in the series, and this is the way Boom is telling us that. Even though there is a possibility, I have no idea. We saw some other references to computers a while ago in the series as well, but to me it doesn't really make sense to have computer race when there is a TV race since they are just both monitors. But I do believe that there will be a new race later in the series one day. My assumption is that... The secret agent uses this computer to watch the tapes he gathers from cameraman heads because we see a cameraman bring him a new yellow tape or drive, which I assume is plunger cameraman's recordings, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's first talk about what the secret agent said. In this moment, the secret agent says, Well done, thanks to you, that scientist is cooked. However, a bigger threat is coming. That's why certain things have to remain secret. There is no evidence left except one thing. This battle you did not survive, Plungerman, and send him back after he says all this. But what did he mean when he said, there is no evidence left, except one thing? I think there is only one conclusion we can come to, and it's that Plunger cameraman just knew way too much after their raid into the base. First of all, the secret agent mentioned a bigger threat while showing the Astro Toilets, which we already knew that they'd be taking over, but I'm assuming that the Alliance has no idea about this other than the Titans seeing an Astro Toilet killing the upgraded DJ Toilet. But Plunger Cameraman saw some files about them in the bunker room last episode. Alongside this, he was the only one left that saw the Secret Agent poster on the wall that day. And he also saw him once again while entering the room where the Secret Agent was talking to the Scientist Toilet even though this conversation didn't sound very friendly. He saw what he saw, and he was the only agent left alive that knew anything about the secret agent and the Astro Toilets file. So we can clearly say that the secret agent wants to remain in the shadows while controlling the war from the sidelines. We still don't know his motives. Only thing we know is that he has his own goals and helps both sides depending on his own needs. One thing that was weird is that even though he had a head from each race, he didn't have any toilets in his room. Maybe that's a sign that he is closer to the toilet side, which only time will tell. After Plunger Cameraman comes back to reality, suddenly all his body starts malfunctioning and TV Woman hugs Cameraman Woman with a worried, sad face. I would have made a joke about wanting to get hugged too, but this moment was just too sad. 
And even in his last moments, Plunger Cameraman looks up to Titan Cameraman to give his last thumbs up to his other buddy before his camera goes offline. That really was one hell of an episode. And I'll talk about the stuff I might have missed tomorrow. Also, since tomorrow is the Valentine's Day, we are going to have a Valentine's Day event in my Roblox game, where you'll be to get limited Valentine's units like Valentine's TV Woman Valentine's Titan Cameraman Valentine's G-Man Toilet, and a lot more alongside this, you will be able to use the code on the screen when the event starts to receive free rewards. So make sure to play my game. The event will start tomorrow.